This is the Tradition Podcast, coming to you with an audio editor's column, Rabbi Jeffrey Sachs' essay, A Man of All Spirits, Excavating the Thought of Rabbi Lamb, read by the author. This is the introductory essay in Tradition's recently released Rabbi Norman Lamb Memorial Volume. This special issue of Tradition contains 35 chapters by our community's leading rabbis, educators, and thinkers, exploring Rabbi Lamb's literary legacy and contributions to Jewish life and learning. Visit traditiononline.org where subscribers can access the full contents of the new issue and visitors can sample select items. Like Tradition Journal on Facebook to keep updated with all the happenings in our Journal of Orthodox Jewish Thought. And now, here's our editor's column with Jeffrey Sachs. During the dark days of COVID-19, Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, passed away at the age of 92. Over the past year, much has been said and written about Rabbi Lamb's life and legacy. Much more will surely be added in the years and decades to come in evaluating his impact and enduring intellectual bequest. How could it be otherwise? Rabbi Lamb possessed a complex constellation of talents and filled a bevy of roles in the life of his community. How many others could lay claim to a lasting legacy as a rabbi, preacher, and teacher, scholar, and writer? public intellectual and spokesman, thinker and philosopher, university president and Rosh HaYeshiva, and many other roles as well. In our desire to assess this rich and multifarious person and his thought, tradition has published the Rabbi Norman Lamb Memorial Volume. The essays consider the monumental record of Rabbi Lamb's writings in fields as varied as the man himself. Classical lumdus and Jewish philosophy, the interface of Torah and worldly wisdom, scholarship on Hasidism and on the ideology and theology of its opponents, modern orthodoxy's relationship with our brethren to the denominational right and left, faith, community, marriage and family, morality, education, the rabbinate and leadership, Israel and Zionism and the Holocaust, and this is far from an exhaustive catalog. In the global public sphere, he tackled matters of interfaith relations and addressed the significance of Judaism's moral and philosophical teachings for civil and constitutional law and for contemporary science, even science fiction. His writings constitute the testament of a man teaching, preaching to, and goading his particular religious community, who also always looked outward communicating a message to the wider world and encouraging us to do so as well. Through his writings, he stimulated us to boldly fill a role in the community and the world. Lead for heaven's sake, lead L'Shem Shamayim, and let the world know that Torah is thriving in Israel, he once exhorted a group of freshly ordained rabbis. The written record excavated in this book spans many decades and various genres, from weighty yet articulate academic tomes in English and Hebrew to expressive works aimed at broad Jewish and general audiences, which popularize but never pander. It is breathtaking to consider that these myriad and lasting scholarly achievements were accomplished while simultaneously performing with success and distinction in the demanding arenas of First, the pulpit rabbinate in a 25-year career, followed by more than a quarter century as the president of Yeshiva University. His singular model of ceaseless public activity yoked to ongoing intellectual pursuits obligates all who shirk one or the other aspect with claims to being too busy. Towards the end of his career, he looked retrospectively on his role at the helm of our religious movement and its flagship institution. He observed that when Moses prepared to pass the reins to the next generation of leadership, he petitioned God to be succeeded by someone very much like himself. Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, God of the spirits for all flesh, appoint someone over the community so that the Lord's community may not be like a shepherdless flock. And the Lord answered Moses, Single out Joshua, son of Nun, a man possessing spirit, and lay your hands upon him. 
Rabbi Lamb remarked that Moses wished to be replaced by a man for all seasons, one blessed with diverse talents, haruchot, spirits in the plural. God's answer was clear. Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man who possesses ruach, spirit, in the singular. It is not necessary for a leader to have all spirits, all talents, all powers and potencies. It is enough if he has ruach, spirit, courage, passion, inspiration, resolve, determination, and ruach, spirit, fire in the belly, is a more important token of future success as a leader than ruchot, a bundle of talents, full-blown. How remarkable. Here was a man almost Moses-like in his own plurality of talents, reminding those of us who would follow him that we will succeed even if we are mere Joshuas. In the retrospective essay, originating as a speech to the 2001 Reitz dinner, he shows a strong but healthy self-awareness and assessment of his own talents and achievements, and by implication, acknowledging his failures and shortcomings as well. Rabbi Lamb challenges us to make ideas matter. I recall he once told me something like, ideas can be as powerful as arrows, but they are powerless without a bow. For what singular spirit do we need be endowed with to meet our challenges? Only courage, passion, inspiration, resolve, determination, and fire in the belly. That is all. Valavai. It was an acknowledgement that intellectual heft, the ability to think and speak and write on the broad array of issues outlined above and dissected in the volume presented, only gets one in his community so far. Perhaps with the outline of these insights already in his mind, he founded Tradition and served as its first editor, with confidence that this journal, the first of its kind, would become a platform for other Orthodox writers and thinkers to generate and disseminate the types of ideas that have the potential to keep our community mentally awake and engaged. Thanks to his spirit and founding vision, tradition has always aspired to be a lens through which we engage in the best of religious thought. Above all, we have always endeavored to shape orthodoxy's discourse and to explore the contours of the world in which we live and the religious future we hope to shape. Perhaps more than any one of his generation, Norman Lamb viscerally believed in the power of thought and theory to animate action and practice. He was committed to the principle that modern orthodoxy would be strongest if its adherents tenaciously engaged the core ideas and philosophical foundations of our movement and he saw his role as galvanizing his congregants, students, friends, and colleagues to join him in this endeavor, to talk, debate, argue. Throughout his long career, he called upon us to wrestle in the arena of ideas in a way that would shape and inform the life of our religious community. I think of my own arrival as a freshman entering Yeshiva University in 1987. At that time, Rabbi Lamb had already been president for over a decade, and timed with YU's centenary, he embarked on conducting a conversation within the university and the larger American Orthodox community, organized around the concept of Torah Umada. He made that motto resonate and inspire, using it as a compass point to orient a process of deliberation and a communal conversation about how to grapple with, make sense of, and organize our values around the confrontation and interaction of Judaism and Torah on one hand, with secular studies and civilization writ large on the other. Torah Umada, and the resulting book by that name, was perhaps the grandest example of his standing at the crossroads of thought and action, philosophy and lived religious community and commitment. But it was only one example of many. I cannot exaggerate the personal importance of those ideas. To hear Rabbi Lam confidently proclaim, 
we are no less human for our devotion to Torah and are no less Jewish for our commitment to worldly wisdom was transformative and helped create a permission structure for a young man finding his way into the world of committed Jewish life. The ongoing debate and discussion he initiated have played a significant role in shaping my life as a Jew and as a rabbi and educator. In occupying the position he inaugurated as editor of tradition, I am animated on a daily basis by his model of how ideas should influence and elevate our lives as thinking religious beings. I pray that our journal continues to live up to his aspirations and ideals. With the goal of honoring Rabbi Lamb as a thinker, scholar, philosopher, and man of ideas, the memorial volume explores different areas of his legacy as expressed through his writing. We asked our leading educators, thinkers, writers, and scholars to engage with the array of ideas with which he challenged us decade after decade. They were each tasked with writing an essay exploring one of his books or major essays, in some cases a set of related essays. The assignment was no mere book review, but an attempt to assess his lasting contribution to Jewish thought through the prism of his works. The authors were asked to consider what issues motivated Rabbi Lamb and stood on the public agenda when he wrote the piece that they were assigned. Where did it fit into the scheme of Jewish life and learning in the 20th century? How is it a reflection of larger issues in his own life and thought? How were those issues and concerns reflected in other aspects of his career? What is this work's enduring legacy and message for us today? The essays in the volume can be read in any order. Each focuses on a discrete work or cluster of works, and the reader will uncover a web of interconnected themes, passions, and concerns in moving among the offerings. Certain works are so central that it is not surprising to see them cited again and again in very diverse contexts. Many of our writers supplemented their analyses of Rabbi Lamb's written Torah by surveying the oral record left behind in the texts of his sermons and public addresses. As an orator, Rabbi Lamb was the peerless, unrepentant darshan of his generation. Thanks to the very significant resource of the Lamb Heritage Archives created by Pearl Berger and maintained at Yeshiva University at yu.edu, readers can access and search his many hundreds of sermon texts on the weekly parasha, holidays, and special occasions, along with other major speeches, as well as eulogies, another genre at which he excelled. Exposure to Rabbi Lamb as an orator is worthwhile for many reasons, not the least of which is that through such a medium, the reader can sample almost firsthand his renowned wit preserved for the generations. He wielded it ably as a tool to enlighten, and we should note that he never fell into the trap of substituting comedy for content. His good humor no doubt helped him manage the barbs of public acrimony he suffered in his chosen institutional and intellectual leadership roles. He noted at career's end that he suffered public insults, unfair and derogatory criticism on behalf of you, the schools and community I love and champion, from right and from left, I consider myself an equal opportunity target. It should be noted that many of our volume's authors, especially the younger ones, were disciples and admirers of Rabbi Lamb from afar. Others shared long-time relationships with him as colleagues, congregants, or students. In some cases, our authors are among the many Lamb family members who have gone on to make their own significant contributions to Jewish life and learning, and we hope that this volume adds a measure of comfort to them on the staggering double loss of Rabbi Lamb just a few weeks after the passing of Mrs. Mindala Lamb of Blessed Memories. We very deliberately eschewed the pretense of the disconnected academic voice in our writing never fully desirable or obtainable in all cases. These writers often telegraph to us how they have been profoundly challenged and personally inspired by Rabbi Lamb. In 1958, the 30-year-old Norman Lamb 
inaugurated the pages of tradition by asking the following. What do we mean by tradition? And why have we decided to publish a journal by that name in an age when man has broken the shackles of gravity and is on the verge of the conquest of the heavens themselves? An age which seems to have broken completely with the past which nurtured it. By tradition, we mean neither a slavish adherence to old formulas nor a romantic veneration of the good old days which strips the past of all meaningfulness for the present. In our conception of tradition, we do not concentrate exclusively on the past at all. The word itself comes from the Latin tradere, which means to hand down, to transmit, to bequeath. Similarly, its Hebrew equivalent, masora, derives from the root, which means to give over. The focus of tradition is, then, the future and not the past. Tradition is thus a commitment by the past to the future, the promise of roots, the precondition of a healthy continuity of that which is worthy of being preserved, the affirmation that the human predicament in general and the Jewish situation in particular are not frighteningly new, but they grow out of a soil which we can know and analyze and use to great benefit. We come after. We live in a religious world transformed by those who came before and by their ideas and vision. We and our children and our children's children are the bearers of the tradition so eloquently articulated, reasoned, and transmitted by Rabbi Norman Lamb and others. Ours is the future to which he committed himself. May we be worthy to carry on his mission and tradition for those who will follow.